Um, so what I'd like to do today is give you uh, an overview of the experience we've had with uh, shear wave imaging of the prostate. Um, I have many disclosures, so I work for everybody, so I have no uh, problems with uh, uh, disclosures. Um, prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed uh, malignancy in men, excluding for skin cancer. There's about 240,000 new cases per year in the United States. Um, the screening standard has been a combination of uh, digital rectal exam and PSA. Um, it's not a very good test. Um, these usually have uh, triggered an uh, ultrasound-guided biopsy, which was random, a 12-core biopsy. Um, and there's two major drawbacks to this uh, standard that we've been using. Uh, we do a large number of unnecessary biopsies, uh, and we find a lot of indolent cancers that we really shouldn't have found. Um, the false positive results are very common, greater than 50%, and about 20% of prostate cancers will actually have a normal PSA. And actually, the United States uh, Task Force actually recommends that we shouldn't be using PSA for screening for prostate cancer because of the low uh, positive biopsy rate and the complications from probable prostate biopsy. Uh, MRI has now uh, started to being used increasingly for detection and staging. And uh, while multiparametric MRI is sensitivity, its specificity still remains low. And conventional uh, ultrasound has really limited sensitivity and specificity. Um, people are using contrast-enhanced ultrasound, uh, but again, it's currently under investigation, and I don't think the results have been very promising. Um, we initially did a pilot study, and uh, based on that study, we really believe that uh, shear wave elastography has uh, significant promise in detection of prostate cancer. These are the results from our initial pilot study that we did. Um, we had about 300 biopsies that were done uh, in uh, patients. And um, I'm not going to go over all these results, but basically what we found was that the stiffness value or the kilopascal value of the prostate cancers was significantly different than benign tissue as well as atypia and acute and uh, chronic inflammation. So uh, because of this, uh, we decided to do a prospective uh, study uh, with Jean-Michel Corius and his team in uh, Paris, France. Um, and I'm going to give you the results that were just uh, printed ahead of uh, print in radiology um, actually last week. Um, this is an IRB HIPAA compliance study. There were the two sites, uh, Nicker Hospital in Paris and Southwoods Imaging, our outpatient office facility in Youngstown. Uh, we had 184 patients that were scheduled for uh, transrectal ultrasound, and these were either because of an abnormal PSA of greater than 4, an increasing PSA, or an abnormal digital rectal exam. Uh, we completed our standard uh, B-mode exam as well as color ultrasound of the prostate exam, and this was followed by a shear wave exam that was done by a uh, radiologist that was skilled in doing the uh, shear wave. And again, we use a supersonic Imagine using the uh, SE-12-3 endocavity probe. This was done before biopsy. Um, and again, uh, we did this, and then the urologist came in to do the biopsy and was blinded to the results that we had on the shear wave imaging. Um, we performed the examination with the patient in the left lateral decubitus position, applying no pressure with the probe onto the prostate. Uh, we used the penetration setting on the system, and we used a color scale with a maximum of either 70 or 90 kilopascals. Um, we held the probe still for about three or four seconds uh, to obtain a measurement. We evaluated the entire gland, and the maximum stiffness values were documented. I will say that the uh, study really only involved the peripheral zone. Uh, the central zone often has very stiff areas, and we really haven't figured out how to interpret those areas yet. So all of the uh, results that we're talking about tonight really just involve the peripheral zone. So then again, after the shear wave ultrasound was done, another person came in, uh, which in our case was a urologist, uh, who performed their standard uh, sextant biopsy using an 18-gauge true-cut needle. 
um, a minimum of 12 biopsies were performed. And then if we had found abnormalities, we then let the urologist doing the biopsies know, so they biopsied those areas also if they did not get them in their regular sextant biopsies. The Gleason scores and uh, prostate intraepithelial neoplasms were recorded for each specimen. The length of each biopsy and the length of adenocarcinoma tissue was recorded. Um, this is just an example of uh, a standard examination. The image on the top is the shear wave imaging, and again, the color coding uh, based on the stiffness values, when here we have a scale of 90 kilopascals um, as very stiff in red, and uh, soft tissue less than 20 kilopascals is in blue. The standard B mode image is on the bottom, um, and you can see in the image on the top, there's an area of red which has a stiffness that I can hardly read, but I think it says 128 kilopascals, which is very stiff. And this is the quality of the images that we routinely got uh, when we did these examinations. So we had 184 patients, which uh, were 100, excuse me, 1,176 peripheral zone biopsies. Uh, 100, excuse me, 1,039 were the standard sextant biopsies, and then 137 of those were ones that after the urologist did his standard exam that we had asked him to do additional targeted biopsies. The positive biopsy rate of the targeted biopsies was 40%, 55 out of 137, while the positive biopsy rate of the sextant biopsies, or the standard of care at this point in time, was 15%. So there was a significant difference in us being able to guide the urologist to the areas that had the stiffest uh, value. And based on our values, we use a cutoff value of 35 kilopascals, or 3.42 meters per second, to differentiate benign from malignant lesions. And again, using that cutoff value of 35 kilopascals, we get a sensitivity of approximately 80 percent, a specificity of 92 percent, a positive predictive value of 62 percent, and a negative predictive value of 96%. And I think this negative predictive value is very helpful because with this negative predictive value, we think we can actually suggest that biopsies not be done since we have such a high positive, uh, excuse me, a high negative predictive value. If we look at the same data in box plots, you can see there is a very good separation between the benign and malignant lesions. The box whisker plot in the upper uh, left is if we just looked at the kilopascal value, the one on the right is if we took the ratio of the lesion versus the standard normal prostate. And you can see that using both methods, we get a very good separation between benign and malignant lesions. Um, these are our results looking at B mode alone using elasticity imaging or shear wave imaging, a combination of the B mode and the elasticity imaging, and if we use the ratio. And you can see that the um, specificity and sensitivities for B-mode imaging are pretty poor, uh, where when we use the shear wave, we get a sensitivity of 95% and a specificity of 85%. And if we add in B-mode imaging, it really doesn't add a lot uh, to the uh, improvement of the sensitivity or specificities. And our areas under the curve actually were more uh, higher for just using elasticity imaging and not including the B-mode imaging. Another very interesting thing that I don't have time to go over in length is what we found was the stiffness value actually correlated to the Gleason score, which again is extremely useful, um, we think, for surveillance because one of the um, standards of cares now is those people with low Gleason scores like six are put on active surveillance and not treated. And we think that by using and looking at the stiffness score, we can follow these patients and decide when they do need to have treatment. And again, that's uh, things that we're very uh, interested in looking at in further studies. These are some examples from the study. The one in the upper left is a uh, benign case. You can see that the peripheral zone is all blue throughout. And the one on the right is a um, Gleason 7 score. And you can see we've got a red area with some surrounding yellow. Um, that uh, corresponds to the uh, prostate cancer. Um, another interesting thing we found is when we saw B-mode nodules, like in this case in the bottom with the yellow arrow, um, on the elastography this showed up as being very soft and it was benign on biopsy where the cancer, which is where the red arrow is pointing to that little red dot, turned out to be a cancer that you couldn't see on B-mode. 
Um, and this is one of the things that we think that this is going to be very useful for. Um, this was an elderly man who had a PSA that went from 8 to 12. He's already had four prostate biopsies over the course of several years because of elevating PSA. They were all negative. So when we do this, you can see that the prostate gland is very soft. There's no stiff areas. And we think this uh, is actually a very good test to tell the urologist. We don't see any evidence for a prostate cancer. We should just not biopsy this patient and just continue to follow them. And I think that the urologists and really the patients are very happy that we can tell them. Another thing that we're very interested in studying is, instead of doing random sextant biopsies, should we only be doing biopsies in the areas that show abnormal stiffness on the prostate? And again, more need, uh, work needs to be done in that, but we think we're going to be able to really decrease the number of negative biopsies we have to do uh, to detect cancers. So to conclude, shear wave elastography provides a highly sensitive, uh, approximately 95% for prostate cancer detection with a very high negative predictive value uh, of greater than 99%. And prostate cancer stiffness values increase with Gleason score and therefore are probably linked with prostate cancer aggressiveness uh, with elevated Gleason scores of greater than seven. So again, we think we can use this test to limit the number of biopsies we have to do, target the biopsy so that we're only biopsying areas that are suspicious for cancer, as well as possibly follow those patients on active surveillance to decide when treatment is needed. Thank you.